Now we continue our conversation this morning, Ending Overdose, a 2018 report from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration reveals more than half of people who misuse pain relievers in the past year obtained the last pain reliever from a friend or a relative. This makes your medicine cabinet a potential drug dealer for prescription drugs. That's a lot to think about, right? So Dr. Don Soli is with the Poison Control Center here in Jacksonville and is joining us this morning. Good morning, thanks for being with us. Obviously, we're continuing this conversation about ending overdose, but I think that one of the things that we have to remember is, is that not always is this a case where these pills are being stolen from a medicine cabinet, but someone in the home who's taking a prescription medicine could be leaving them out and young people, children could be getting a hold of them. Absolutely, there are definitely numerous cases of little children getting into beauty buprenorphine, mm -hmm. methadone, and that could be life-threatening. And we have actually seen local cases that have, have um, uh, unfortunately ended tragically as a result of that. I in terms of the amount of calls that you receive, let's say, around the state that you hear about from uh, poison control, would you say that the majority of these involve cases in, uh, you know, where a child has accidentally overdosed because they've somehow been able to access? From the calls that we receive from the home situation, yes, the majority of them are from parents calling about children that might have gotten into something that was in the home. Now we do get a large portion, well about 25% of the poison center calls come from hospitals mm -hmm. and then in those situations those cases are usually dealing with adults and that could be accidents or intentional overdoses. So, so then, then quickly here, uh, your message to parents to begin with and then I'd like to move on to adults. So our message to parents is to make sure that you keep your medications locked up and away. Um, so that way, number one, so visitors can't access them if they happen to be in your home, but also so children, whether they are grandchildren, whether they're visiting children, whether they're your children, whether you're pets, any of those people that are in the home do not access those medications that could be so dangerous. And then for those who are actively taking these medications and they do have visitors to their home, they need to be aware of the fact mm -hmm. that that visitor who may be excusing themselves to use the restroom could essentially be pilfering their medicine cabinet. Absolutely, and they'll take just one or two pills at a time. You probably wouldn't even notice, because of course it'd be real obvious if they took the whole bottle. So is there something then that, that we can do to safeguard our prescription drugs in those kinds of situations to prevent that from happening? Absolutely, I have two examples here. So one is a medication lock box um, that you can store your medications in and it has a key. The other option, which is a little easier to use when you happen to be traveling or things like that, is a bag. Same thing, same premise, it has a key that you can lock it up and store your medications safely and keep them away from people. We know that there are a number of people also who may be automatically older people who automatically re receive their prescription drugs every three months or so in the mail and maybe they've stopped taking those medications and have failed to notify the pharmacy. In those situations, or someone who was maybe in the hospital and had extra pills left over that are prescription, what what can they do? Because it's you're not supposed to flush these down the toilet. It's not Correct. good for the water supply, Correct. right? Correct. So what can they do then to help safely get rid of these medications? There are a couple different options. One is you can participate in the drug take back days. So the DEA usually does twice, two of those a year, and there's also on their website, and you can even get to it from the poison control website, is there is a location that there are drop boxes. A lot of pharmacies do have some drop boxes that you can go and dispose of them. But there are some home options, and those home options include, here's one example, this is doTERRA. Mm -hmm. There is also Dispose Rx is another one. Um, and can we do a little show yeah, and tell? Yeah, please, okay. show us how so it works. Basically, all you're gonna do is you're gonna open the product, mm -hmm you're going to get the medication, and it does make the um, medication unusable. And the packaging is one that will go away over time. So, so it's biodegradable. Yes. Is there something in this? Yes. Yeah, okay. There is a, there is a product yeah. in there. And then when we add the water, and then you seal it back up again, it's got a nice little Ziploc mm. seal. And then you're gonna shake it, and it will make the product unusable. So it disintegrates essentially then into this it. and then you can just throw it away. Yes. And you know this is this will fit more than just one pill yes. also so oh, this yeah. could be used for maybe an entire bottle or Correct. even more. Correct. How do you find this? Now there are some organizations that do hand these out. I think Dr um, Drug Free Duval is one that hands them out. You can also even order them online. Um, Disposer X, I think there are some pharmacies that if you have an opiate prescription, they will hand it out with it. So then therefore, if you need to dispose of it, you can do it that way too. And, and in this short amount of time, it's done? 
And mm -hmm. now you can just throw yep. it away. You would throw it away. Would you remind our viewers, because I do think it's important, a final note, it takes very, very little of something laced with fentanyl or okay. to, to, to truly kill someone. That is very, very true. Um, supposedly a lethal amount of fentanyl and then all the analogs of fentanyl that are out there now too. Um, it only takes a couple grains that could technically be lethal um, if someone ingests it or uses it. you're talking it. just like the tip of your fingernail, uh, right. just for perspective. Right. Dr. Soli, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Great information, really appreciate as we continue this conversation.